Anyway, um, did y'all see Cameron and Mace respond to Jay Prince, the father? So, if you guys haven't noticed, right? So, basically, Shakur Stevenson had a boxing match. A lot of people said it was boring. People were walking out. And, essentially, Jay Prince put out a, uh, a post, essentially telling everybody who was laughing at Shakur Stevenson, but especially Cameron and Mace, because they have a sports show called It Is What It Is, basically said, yo, don't shit talk my guy Shakur Stevenson. I'll catch all them fades for him. Now, Shakur... Mm, so, Cameron... Mace and Jay Prince and Shakur Stevenson, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Every single situation that Jay Prince pops up in, he's always like some sort of like godfather type role. And it's like, I wonder to myself, who is Jay Prince, bro? Because I heard Wack 100 say like he had something to do with the feds. And then, like, a bunch of other stuff. But, like, bro, who is Jay Prince? Like, is he, like, the boogeyman? Like, who is he? I'm still trying to figure that out. But, um, yeah, bro. Mace and Killer Cam, they're standing on what they're saying and how they believe and how they're feeling things. Um, Cameron, you feel me? He's been looking spiffy as ever. Got the teeth done. You feel me? In suits now. He's leveled up in life. Uh, you feel me? They don't live in Texas, so I don't think they really got to worry about anything from Jay Prince. And Shakur Stevenson is Shakur Stevenson. You feel me? Which is so crazy because Shakur Stevenson's BM used to be uh she used to be with yb like she was there when he got out of uh prison or jail one of the times and then she posted up calling herself nba young girl and then what happened shakira stevenson put a baby in that girl and now she's with him which is kind of crazy but like the way that these men in the industry like hop around all these women who are like all together it is crazy but hey, I don't know. They just they I guess they just love rich men. So they're just hopping from millionaire to millionaire to millionaire, having a good time. But man, it is what it is. Let me know how you guys feel about everything though. Who's in the wrong? Who's in the right here? It's a boy Big Act News, and I'm out. Poor Stevenson had kind of got a little bit interesting with 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 Cam and Mace because he was talking crazy to them. But let me start out with what Jay Prince says. Jay Prince says. Numbers don't lie. Haters do. Let the numbers say he's boring and nobody wants to watch him. Sorry to tell you, it's just a select few of you haters. You can see there's proof that he has the number one ratings of any fight on ESPN this year and the top three ratings since 2022. To all of you haters who want to escalate that hate outside the ring, I'm Shakur's manager and will handle all his business outside the ring. In other words, Cam and Mace, I will fade all his shots and take all bets. Now, the, the information that was put out that Jay Prince was trying to quote and hype up, it said that Shakur Stevenson fight was the most watched boxing main event on ESPN aired in 2024. Now, keep in mind, ESPN, if you have a cable package, is free. So it's not pay-per-view. I uh, said so average audience on the network was 1 million, 1.18 million. And it peaked at 1.25 million. Those Nielsen numbers do not ex include um, ESPN Plus viewership, only linear TV. Okay. Now, before it got like kind of like off the rails, we saw, and let me see if I can find these tweets. There was a bunch of tweets. There's a bunch of tweets from Shakur Stevenson just kind of like cussing out. I'm not gonna be a fighter. Uh, I'm trying to show you. Sh okay, he went on a supposedly a meltdown where he was just like, "Yo, y'all want to believe only had eight thousand people there?" He also threatened to box Cam and Mace. 
You know, he was like telling people, oh, they're putting up fake numbers. And it was like, I wonder how much they paid them fuck niggas to leave at the same time so ESPN could show it on camera. Um, obviously got into some stuff with, with, with Mace and Cam saying that they were down, like he's down to pull up with them and they could like, they could fight him in the streets if, if they want to. And um, yeah. Essentially, that was the rhetoric. And Cam and Mace responded to that. Here we go. Cool, you just stop with ads. What? They play one more Adam Dunn. Philly, Escalate that hate outside of the ring. I'm Shakur's manager and I handle all his business okay. outside of the ring. In other words, Cam and Mace, I will fade all his shots and take all bets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I chill, mm, mm, mm. I you got this one. one. I got this one. Yeah. All right, go ahead. I got this one. You going to take all his fades and and take all his shots, and you handle everything out the ring. All right. So then we talking to you then, all right? <laughs> we starting with you. Since you the big homie, we starting with you. That's how it goes around here. Um, I, I want to just start off by saying you are so, like, lacking self-awareness. Like, when you, when you give such a lackluster performance... And then you think you can make threats to people because you gave a lackluster performance? Pause. You don't have the right to tell me what I should like or to tell Cam what he should like. That's that's not your place. Like, art is subjective, right? So if art is subjective and I don't like something, you, you can't really get mad at us because we don't like something. And you're standing there with two, I mean, two Hall of Fame boxers that are constantly letting their hands go. So I think it's, it's crazy that Andre Ward let his hands go. Terrence Crawford definitely let his hands go. And then you walk out with these boxers and you don't tell the next guy to let his hands go. This is this is a, a lapse of judgment. And I'm going to tell you another thing. When you're dealing with older people, they're the last to know that things have changed. We not your little niggas. Like the way you talk it, I don't, I don't get what you mean. We're not your little niggas. Like for real, all that big homie stuff, that's for little niggas. Little niggas have big homies. We're not little niggas. So we don't even respect big homies. I know killer doesn't. And for me, I never respected niggas in the streets. That's why I always got the problems I got. Niggas would tell me, Mace, chill. No, chill for what? Who is this nigga? <laughs> That's how I feel listening to this, man. Like, I want to respect you, but I can't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if I got a little, like, the dudes that raised me, if I was out of pocket, they would tell me I'm out of pocket. They wouldn't let me put them on a crash out mission. They would say, yo, Mace, listen, listen. Mm -hmm. Around here... We don't send niggas to do nothing for us. We don't pay niggas to handle our problems. Mm -hmm. You got to put in your own work around here, little man. That's what you were supposed to tell them. You can't go out here and talk crazy and then send me on a mission. Mm -hmm. Nah, this is where the game got messed up. When young niggas started sending old niggas out, and just because this little ignorant nigga got a few dollars, he make all of you that's supposed to be real run after his mission. Mm. This is a problem, Jay Prince. And I'm going to tell you like this. If you're 60 years old mm. and you're trying to be a street nigga, oh, shit. <laughs> you failed. You failed. You failed. You failed. I'm telling you this. And uh, I, I'm, I stand. My name is Mace. I stand by this message. Oh, shit. Mm. See? That's the murder. You know. That's what I'm talking about with you right there. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about right there. That's, they, they, he said it. I, I, <laughs> he said it. I, I just don't even figure out what the fuck. The, I don't know what the slang means. I don't know what the face in the back, but I take the back. 
<laughs> Whatever the bet I take, I like that murder. Yeah, I, like I mean, because when you think about it, right? Yes, I know. She got more. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you think, because I just, I just was with Kanye a while ago, and and we called Jay Prince on a, on a, um Facetime, so mm-hmm. he was like, you know, y'all getting together good. So I don't even know why he would come at me with that energy. You know what I'm saying? I was really, I felt really disrespected by him doing it. Right. There's certain people you're supposed to come at like that. And I'm not one of them. Well, let me ask you a couple questions instead yeah. of since we hit. I'm going to get on my broadcast shit. So murder. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel him coming at yourself and Cameron and didn't say anything to Kendrick Lamar about the Drake situation, because anytime Drake has a problem, <laughs> it seems like he runs and tell niggas, yo, puff. Yo, niggas, niggas, niggas Drake, nigga, yeah, nigga, nigga. How, do you, how do you feel? How do you feel? I mean, I want you to yeah. answer, but how do you feel about him calling you and your partner out and didn't say anything about that? Partisans of country music. You, you, you said something really profound. He said something to Puff, right? Mm-hmm. He said nothing to Kendrick. Right. He says something, and I know you're going to elaborate about this later. He says something to the dudes in New York, but he, and that didn't really go over well. As far as what? Um, Whatever kid that was oh, yeah. that got the chain taken. Right. right. And then he, and you're going to talk about all this. So I'm going to let you talk about it more in detail, but he didn't say nothing to whack. Like, it's like, so when you come talking to me, I feel like you're very selective. This is exactly what I meant last week when I was talking about street niggas being selective. Mm-hmm. They got select selections of who they think they're going to. Hey, th- th- what he's saying is actually a real thing. I've noticed. You know what I mean? We've only seen a lot of the street dudes start showcasing their street type of behavior or their toughness when it comes to people who you assume wouldn't be a threat or they'll they'll do it to civilians right like you don't see them actually beefing with other people and and doing the same type of shenanigans right for example meek mill how you a gangster in philly and i'm your biggest op this shit don't even make sense like, come on, like, bro, how, like, how you gonna want us to believe your gangsterism is when you ain't never slapped nobody, shot nobody, but you're down to come to academics house and try to risk it all? Come on, you sound like a clown, right? That's that's half for rappers though. Like, let, let's be honest. Like rappers, they'll be like, uh, yo, these niggas don't beef with each other. Like they mad polite to each other. They wrapping their arms around each other, like taking shots in the clubs. They don't know these men, but really. They're like fake lions in a jungle. They're cat with the lion suit on, right? They're all a bunch of cats with the lion suit on. And when they see somebody they think is another lion, they're like, all right, let me leave this person alone because he might really be a lion. They can't tell who is who. So they're like, he might really be a lion. Imagine one of these bitch-ass rappers that really got into it, King Von. Well, not Quando. And King Von would have killed these niggas. Like King Von was a killer. Half of these niggas is just rapping about it. He was killing niggas. So the point what I'm just trying to say is that uh, that's one thing. You know, and WAC 100 says this a lot. Selective politicking is a thing. It's unfortunate that you that, that the people who claim to be the toughest usually only try to prove that point by picking on the people that seem the weakest. Right? I'll give you another one. Freddie Gibbs said he's a vice lord. Nigga, you a whole gang member. You got your face pushed through a drywall in Prime 112 by Jim Jones, who's a blood. You went to a, a barbecue spot, and nigga, they barbecue Joe ass, nigga, with all the beating and bruising they gave you and snatched the chain off yo and your current girl or your girl at the time's neck, and you had nothing to say about them niggas. You know if you go to a Freddie Gibbs show to this day, you know what he, he has a whole five to ten minute segment 
that says fuck academics. Not fuck the guy who pushed your face through the fucking porcelain urinal in motherfucking Prime on 12. Nope. Not the guy who basically was beating your ass that he almost tenderized your ribs. Your shit was about to get barbecued and put on the menu. He don't want to talk about nobody in Buffalo. You know who he talks about? Academics. Unfortunately, the majority of the, the, the people who you believe they're super tough or gangster, they only they only pick the people who they feel like have fear for them so they won't have to do anything. Now, when it comes to Jay Prince, and with all due respect, because there's Jay Prince out here as a boogeyman, but not playing. Anyway, the point is this. I do think it was kind of odd that he was so absent and so quiet during the whole Drake thing, Drake and Kendrick thing. You gave everybody a fucking courtesy call. You've been issuing courtesy calls for everybody. Why did we not see one to Kendrick? You say you're the one who prevented it from going further with uh, um, Pusha T. You've issued a lot of courtesy calls. Why none then? Mace is trying to explain, or actually Cam will explain. I'm going to get tough with, so I feel there's a must for me to say something. Because you can't be selective with us, because we're not, we're, not, we're not the weakest on the, on the chart to deal that with. We, right. we do commentating. That's what we keep it there. But we, you know, cigars. Okay. okay. Cigarettes. Yeah, well. Just hookah. Yeah, yeah. Vapes. Grape, strawberry. Strawberry, yeah. coconut, yeah. pause, <laughs> lavender. <laughs> <laughs> we don't yeah. dug no smoke. Yeah, no, so just to elaborate, no, I'm in bro, I'm in interview mode since you're going to yeah. go this route this morning. Yeah. He did say something back to Wack, but Wack said most, some of the most disrespectful shit I ever heard. Yeah. It, I've been doing this 27 years. Uh, it, it was wild. I'm, it's so disrespectful, I'm not going to repeat it. Mm -hmm. But he squashed it. After, like, for Wack would have said that, I mean, and I'm broadcast cam right now. I don't know if it couldn't have been subtle, but I, I can't be cool with you after you just said what you said. Yeah. Like, it was really bad. Matter of fact, matter of <laughs> fact, this is what we're going to do. Okay. I'm going to interview. Now, Killer, tell me how okay. you would really say it. <laughs> All I should be going viral real quick, just so before I even get to the J. Prince shit. All I should go viral so niggas never see how this started. They only see how I be getting finished. So the, for the people that's catching up on this who have no idea how this started, we gave our opinion of the fight. We said the shit was boring. All of us said it was boring. It's a hundred niggas saying it. Now, and I think this goes to Shakur Stevenson. Brother, this is such a, this looks so crazy on you. You, you look sensitive. I'm going to also say this with all due respect. The J Prince move these days looks weak. It looks like you need your daddy to come handle your friends. Yo, has anybody ever been in school and somebody who was either getting joked on or maybe they lost a fight or whatever, they got their mama coming to school or their daddy coming to school in the principal's office, and every every kid that sees that, you know what they say to each other? Oh, yeah, he, he ain't built like that. Just everybody leave that nigga alone from now on. Like, just leave him out of the mix. Like, that that's kind of what it sounds like. When when Jay Prince jumps up and starts making these these statements on your behalf, it makes it seem like you not the person niggas should have been hanging with the recess anyway. So this is why I'm a little bit confused why he even had that much, you know, um that Jay Prince, even if he was gonna send a message, would come out publicly and do it. It's boring. But because I should go viral, niggas think that they could keep talking to us. Shakur Stevenson told us to get the strap <laughs> or strap up or better yet, put the gloves on so he could fight us. We said what he said, and then he started going crazy. Everything was over with. Me personally, I'm sick of it before I even address the J. Prince thing. I'm sick of it. I left it alone. We have not talked about a nigga this much before his fights or after his fights and none of his fights. However many fights he had in his career, this is the most traction I, the nigga ever got. That's a fact. My nigga, I had a meeting on Friday. This is no cap. With some, some of my Jewish partners. 
Shout out to Shapiro's. I won't give you first name. Shout out to my partner. Before the meeting started, they asked me, Murder, wh- why are you arguing with Tupac's son, Cam? I said, what are you talking about? He said, no, we see it in the media. You're arguing with, with ain't, ain't that Tupac? So I said, that, that's not, it's a, no, his first name is Shakur. And I lied. He said, well, what, what does he do? I said, no, never mind, never mind. They didn't even know. They yeah. never heard of the nigga. Yeah. But because we keep talking about the nigga. We don't said, keep talking about we, it. Yeah, exactly. He, I, it, no, you know what it is? Our clips go viral all week. So yeah. it don't stop. It ain't, once we say it, it's viral all week. Oh, okay. So word to everything I love, I swear to God, after I got off that meeting, I said to myself, I'm leaving this shit alone, bro, because niggas don't even know this nigga. You don't know, I'm, I don't mind, keep going. Yeah. But I'm like, this don't make no sense. So what happened is Saturday night, I guess they interviewed him, and they was like, hey, is everything cool with you and Mason, with Mason Cam and all that, da, da, da? Fuck them bitch-ass niggas. Them niggas are still bitch-ass niggas. Ain't nothing changed. This is what he said Saturday night. This is a week after the fight. So the niggas who run my social media page, or our social media page, they got the same uh, humor that we got. Yeah. <laughs> they start putting up pictures of him when he's crying the Olympics, whatever, whatever. The next day is when Jay Prince just say what she wrote. Hey, yo, my man, listen, James. Let me explain something to you, bro. May said it exactly. Like you 60, nigga. You 60. What are you talking about? What are you talking Bro. I lost mad respect for you because I used to have mad respect for you. When you had Shakur with you, when you line um, young boy NBA up, why the fuck you got Shakur with you? And this is why he acting like that. That is true. Basically, he's saying that Shakur Stevenson's acting like a thug because like some street shit went down where Jay Prince, NBA young boy, where he was making a video saying, yo, I got your, I got your item. Touchdown, back in H-Town. Now, shit, at the time, I didn't know this was Shakur Stevenson, but this apparently is the boxer Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? We've been in Las Vegas taking care of business. You know what I mean? Kicking ass and taking names, you know? I know y'all saw the homie Shakur Stevenson the other night on ESPN or uh, in the night with a beautiful body punch. You know, I thought all the guts were going to come out of the man's mouth, you know? But, you know, that's just the way it is sometimes. So we're getting, re- we're getting ready to celebrate. You know, on the 27th, the little homie having a birthday. We're getting ready to celebrate. We're going to have a ball. We're going to, you know, mob tie. Y'all invited. We're going we're gonna to party. We're going to party, man. And welcome the little homie to the city. And uh, you know, I can't wait. But on another note, on another note, school, while, while we was gone, um, I got a call, you know what I mean? Because the little homie, young boy, the place got broke into. Yeah, so basically. He went in his place, disrespected different things, and, uh, you know, I got a call about it. And, and the little homies that went into this place want to make that right because they understand that, you know what I mean, a uh, young boy family is, is okay with me. And uh, as you can see, homie, to make a long story short, I got your keys to your Rolls Royce. I got your keys to your McLaren. You know, all that shit that they took. And the homie, Shakur, what you got, homie? You got your uh, Rolls Royce umbrellas, you got your keys, you got a bunch of other shit, so get in contact with us, bro. Get your shit back, homie. All good, waiting on you. What the fuck? That was like an extortion video. This is exactly why you like it like that. Uh, talking about you got young boy NBA umbrellas and his keys to score. Young boy NBA told y'all niggas eat a dick. This is what he said. This is what Young Boy NBA said. Wack 100 was the most disrespectful. Wild disrespect. I ain't even gonna repeat the shit Wack 100 said. Mad disrespectful. Drake is beefing with Kendrick Lamar as we speak. I have not heard. This is the first time Drake got into some shit and I hear you say shit to Kendrick Lamar now. Why do you think that you could tell us what we can and cannot say, my nigga? Control your nigga. Control that nigga. Ain't nobody gonna tell a nigga Get the strap and then we gonna sit there and be like, hey, hey, I think we we should shut up. Nah, nigga. This ain't no, this is not 1982, bro. You cannot sit here and tell niggas get the strap and then niggas be quiet. Nobody know that part because I should just be going viral. You bugging. You bugging, James. You bugging, my nigga. 
And I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't know what bet you're talking about, all that other slang down. Bet it, whatever bet you talking about, bet it. I don't know what bet it. <laughs> <laughs> bet it. <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna bet it, bet it. I don't know what to bet it. Before we even move on from this, I gotta ask, do you guys feel like right. there's a beef? Because there's literally a full on article, even from Billboard, talking about. Yo, Shakur Stevenson, man, listen, you, you got to be your own man. This this looked bad on you. It looked like Jay Prince is trying to, you know, protect you from harsh criticism or protect you from people. And again, you know, I'm, I'm guessing you mob ties and you, you know, you, you locked in with Jay Prince. But having him send out courtesy calls or send out these messages to people who are critical of you, it definitely does look weak. You want to get to that pay per view stage where you're selling out or you're doing some shit with Tank Davis? You got you gotta you know again have entertaining fights and also not take shit personal. All right, all right, Cam and Mace, man, I I love that show. It is what it is. That show was kind of funny. Uh, r real quick, I, I know y'all are kind of. Yo, so they, they release footage of, by the way, Trump announced his new VP. It's apparently, what's his name's name? His new VP is J.D. Vance. Don't know too much about him, but who cares about the VP? Because Uncle Trump definitely finna win. Now, the guy who tried to kill Trump, supposedly there's like videos of him um, that have surfaced. And it says, hey, according to TMZ, this video is captured a couple of years ago of Matthew Crooks while he was in high school. Um, basically, it, it showed him kind of being bullied. You know what I'm saying? So this is a guy who shot at Trump. Is it audio? Is it audio on Trump? Hmm. 